This is Mark Schofield from Inside the Pylon with the latest edition of First Sound. Today we're going to look at Western Kentucky quarterback Mike White. and We're going to examine process and speed and decision making. We're going to look at three plays and I'm going to start in 2016. Part of the reason why I spend most of my late spring and my summers watching tape on prospective quarterbacks for the next draft class is because it's very beneficial to get a baseline on these guys, how they enter into the what might be their final collegiate season. As you know, I'm the big development is not linear guy, but you do like to see some progress in certain areas, certain traits that are critical to play in the quarterback position. Process and speed and decision making are two of those critical traits. You need to be able to read and react to the defense. To quote the great Pete Mitchell, call sign Maverick, if you think, you're dead. You need to do this fast. You need to diagnose what the defense is doing and make a decision, the right decision, based off of that. That's why decision-making process and speed are two of the critical traits that you need to uncover when you study these quarterbacks. Can they make the right decisions and can they make them quickly enough to get the ball out of their hands before the defense has time to make a play? Let's start with this first play from the 2017 Boca Raton Bowl, Western Kentucky versus Memphis. First and 10, early second quarter. White under center here. We're going to see it at the start. We'll have jet motion across the formation. Shout out to our boy Betts, who should really change his screen name to Jets now, at all22 on Twitter, who makes the argument that you should include some sort of motion on every single play, particularly jet motion. As we'll talk about a little bit later, there are some NFL teams that agree with him. But we'll have motion across the formation. And look at the defense at the snap here. Nobody trails him. Nobody carries the motion. That should tell White that this is zone coverage. He'll execute a play-action fake, come out of it, and look to throw the Ben 8 post route up here to the right. The motion man releases to the flat here. That's where I think you should go with the football. As he executes this fake, you can see the defense. They react to the motion. The safety comes over, but doesn't really crash down on it. As he comes out of the fake, here's sort of the dual post route that he wants to throw. He wants to throw this post. And look at the traffic in the area. You have two defenders underneath, three defenders over two, basically. And all this space as this guy's going to leak out. But... White stares down this post route. Even though he had the pre-snap indicator of motion to tell him what the coverage was, or at least indicate to him what the coverage probably was, he doesn't take advantage of the situation. If it were man and somebody was trailing this, then you'd have one less defender up here. You'd probably have an easier window to throw the post. But since they stayed in zone, these guys are dropping a bit. Nobody's really covering this flat. This is wide open. White doesn't read and react to it correctly. He stays trained with his eyes on this post route. And as we can see, I'll slow it down a little bit. There's really nowhere to fit this. This is a tough throw to make. You've got to try to fit it in here with these two guys right underneath it. And then you've got this wide open. But White tries to fit it in here. Can't. And it's incomplete. So that's sort of a baseline. That's why coming into the, this past season, I wanted to see some improvement, process and speed, decision making. That, those were one of the red flags that I sort of had on White coming into this year. Now let's go to his last regular season game against Middle Tennessee State. And I have to say, I loved this game from Mike White. I think if you want to study White, this is a tape to put on because Middle Tennessee State did some stuff up front. They ran basically a 3-3-5 defense. They did a lot of different things up front that really tested his decision-making, tested how he was going to read and react, tested you know, his thought process when post-snap didn't match up with pre-snap. Here we see three down linemen, two linebackers, third linebacker here off the edge. That's the initial pre-snap look he sees. The play that they run, sort of a double China variant where you have corner route from number three and then a little tosser type concept underneath where you have the dual slant routes. Double China has in routes here. That's why I'm calling it a variant. Other people call this double in. 
depends on your terminology. That's the route concept to keep in mind. Again, here's the pre-snap look that he sees. Two guys showing blitz, third guy down near the box, three down linemen. Then late pre-snap, this linebacker drops. So now he's got to sort of change his expectations yet again. These two guys now are showing blitz. And they come. So now what White needs to decide, if he wants to throw the concept here, he needs to read this guy and figure out what he's going to do. If he sort of squats here, your options are really the corner or this double slant right here, throwing the outside one. Because if he's going to squat on the inside one, he'll take that away. You've really got to make a quick decision here. Especially when you see this corner dropping, he's going to get under that. You've got to really get this ball out quick because if he squats, then he's going to be in a position to make a play on the outside slant. So there's a lot going on here. Conversely, if he drops a bit and starts to carry number three, this inside slant is going to be where you want to go with the football. As he vacates, replace that with the football. So there's a lot going on and not a lot of time to make up your mind because you've got the blitz coming. He starts to carry. White sees that. He's turned his hips. He's starting to carry. See? See? He's coming up. This guy's vacating as well. Slot corner here is inside of the outside slant route, leaving this open. So if he's carrying that, that's where you go with the football. You throw that inside slant. That's exactly what White does. Again, this is a lot to read and react and decipher in a short period of time. Running through at full speed here. Again, that's all you need. That's all you need to see. That linebacker has carried that route just enough to create that small of a window. And that's exactly where White goes with the football. And because he gets it out so quickly, because he processes it so quickly, he gets it on his receiver that he's able to make a move after the catch. Cuts up field, picks up the first down. Now let's go back to sort of where we began. A play that had motion to it, and White didn't make the right decision. This is third and two midway through the first quarter. You're in the red zone. Slot here. X split wide. Get your H back. Tight end. Whatever you want to designate that guy as in the wing here. Seven in the box. Everybody on the line of scrimmage showing you blitz. Cover two look right now in the secondary. I'm going to describe this play as Patriots-esque. I'm not making a Mike White to Tom Brady comparison. I'm making more of an offensive, conceptual comparison. If you've watched the New England Patriots as much as I have, or even if you've just watched one of their games, you see how much they use motion, how much they use pre-snap shifting. It's to do two different things. One, it's to get advantageous matchups in the pass game. But two, it's to help their quarterback. And think about that for a second. The Patriots want to help Tom Brady arguably the best quarterback of all time. But they do it because they know that the benefits of giving your quarterback more information before the snap are incredibly beneficial. So here, there's the first shift. It's subtle, but it's a little trade up here. Get one guy on, the other guy off. Very subtle, but it gives the defense one thing to think about. Then they'll bring him in motion across the formation. Just like we saw with the first play. Now you saw this safety sort of rotate down over him now. Corner drop off. Now as the motion comes, the other safety, the backside safety, now trails it. So if you're white, if you see man look here, press man here, off man look here, and now this safety is coming across the formation in response to motion, that's a signal to white this is man coverage. And given everybody on the line of scrimmage here, that's another signal that this might be z cover zero blitz, zero blitz here with man coverage across the board. Western Kentucky run spot. Corner. Spot snag. Flat. Now let's add that piece to the informational puzzle. 
the safety's rotating over in response to this guy's motion, and he's running a flat route away from him. So if everything comports with what you think is happening in this pre-snap phase, this guy's going to have to get all the way over here to cover that flat route, unless they switch it, unless they banjo it. But if they blitz, and that's really what's happening, you got to get it to this guy in the flat quickly, because there's a potential here, not just to pick up the first down, you might get six on this, because that's a long way to cover, and he'll have some traffic in the way. So what happens? There it is. They're not switching it. Press guy is staying on him. This off guy is going to stay on the spot. And here's the safety responsible for that flat route. And look at White. He's looking right at it. Everything he thought pre-snap is now confirmed. And he gets the ball out. Good placement. Touchdown. You know, I just love the way that this play came together. And it's in such contrast to the first play that we looked at where White had the motion and he doesn't make the right decision. Again, there's the motion, stares it down, doesn't make the right decision, that when we come to here in his final collegiate regular season game, I like what he does there. And that's, to me, evidence that, look, he's starting to develop that speed that you need in the mental part of the game to make the right reads and decisions. I really liked his tape against Middle Tennessee State. Now, is White somebody that... I think you should go early on in the draft. No, I think he's played himself definitely into that day two mix. I think he's a guy that in that third round, that's kind of where I think the sweet spot is for him. I think he's somewhat scheme diverse. And from what we've seen from 2016 to 17, then to his final season this past year, I like the sort of developmental arc to him. He's definitely somebody you should do your homework on. I know he has some supporters out there like Eric Galco from Optimum Scouting, who's a big fan. So I think Mike White is definitely somebody you should have on your list to watch. And hopefully, if you're a fan of a team that needs a quarterback, that team has him on their list to watch as well. I'm Mark Schofield. Thanks for watching this installment of First Sound. Reminder to check out all the First Sound videos at youtube.com backslash inside the pylon. Also, check out the work at InsideThePylon.com where we are gearing up for our second draft guide. As always, thanks for watching.